Okay, this has gone quite badly. Because I've got diesel in my f***ing eye. Ah, Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and to a very first for me as I'm going to be servicing my own car. This is my gorgeous new to me 2008 Range Rover Vogue SE, which as you saw in my last video, I picked up a couple of weeks ago. And when you turn the key in the ignition, it indicates that this car is overdue in oil service by around 5,000 miles. In fact, if I review the service record that came with this car, it indicates that the last service, which was an inspection one oil service, was done at around 115,000 miles or around 15,000 miles ago from now. So it definitely indicates it's time for a good old oil change, which like I say, I've never ever done on a car before. So this is gonna be an experience, hopefully more for me than you guys to watch. Hopefully it'll be fairly straightforward, but we'll see. So then what we're looking at here is hopefully everything I can possibly need to complete this service by myself in terms of parts, tools I've been accruing over the past few weeks and days, and this, which is gonna be essential for doing the oil change. Now, if any of these parts look familiar, it's probably because they are. Um, you may have heard of a YouTube channel called Sam's Motor and Machine. He owns a 4.4 TD V8 Range Rover and makes absolutely fantastic videos on doing sort of home repairs and maintenance and is the sole reason for me attempting this myself. He did a video, I guess a few months back, doing it exactly what I'm gonna be doing today on his Range Rover. And that video has solely inspired me to go ahead and do it myself. So a huge shout out to him. Hopefully everything you did in your video, I'll be able to do here and we'll have a successful day. Anyway, let's go through what we have. Here we have everything we need then, hopefully, for the oil service today. So parts will be linked in the description. As with on Sam's video, they're basically all the same things. This is the service kit from Advanced Factors. You can choose your car. So this is specifically for the 3.6 TDV8, which only has one air filter, although I've actually bought a second as a spare. So we've got the fuel filter or the diesel filter, which hopefully um, is going to make a difference to how the car sort of performs and maybe fuel economy if that hasn't been done in a while. We've got air filter, of course, and like I say, I've got a second one of those. Then we've got the cabin filter, which is a good thing to do, of course, as well. We've got two lots of five liters of oil, and I'll let you know exactly what spec they are in a moment. Then I've bought some coolant because we're gonna just sort of top that up today as well. We have the oil filter, which in fact is the first thing we're going to start with. And that's it, obviously the oil, and the filters and then in terms of tools that you're going to need well i've gone ahead and actually bought one of these sort of snap on well, it's not an actual snap on but it's a magnetic uh, torch which is going to be handy because we're actually going to be working sort of half in the garage under the bonnet so if it gets dark i've got that i thought that was a quite fun little purchase got some spanners got some small socket sets uh, i've got a ratchet and a all-important 32 millimeter socket which is going to be essential for getting the oil filter out and securing this new one so not that much stuff needed to be honest and oh last but not leastly we've got this which is a nine liter fluid extractor which is exactly how we're going to be getting the oil out of the car we're not going to be draining it from the sump plug we are going to be pumping it out again sam did this in this in in, in his video and it's an appealing option for me because, well, it's safer. I'm not having to get underneath the car um, with improper tools to drain the oil. So this is hopefully gonna be a really useful tool. It's about 60 quid from Amazon and um, should mean we can suck all the oil straight out of the engine before topping it up. So first thing we're gonna do is remove the oil filter. Then we're gonna remove the oil with the pump, hopefully, and we'll go from there. I'm really excited. I've genuinely been so excited about starting this video, but I'm also nervous that I'm gonna cock it all up, but we'll see, so do bear with me. Hopefully this will be a load of fun. So first and probably easiest task of the day then is just removing this engine cover. And before you laugh at my pink gloves, I found these rubber cleaning gloves to be super useful for those times that you just need a little bit of extra friction or leverage on 
something you're twisting or just even on your tools. So uh, please excuse the pink. There's that. And what this will then do is expose in here, right here, the oil filter, which is the first thing we're going to be removing. And my 32 mil socket fits perfectly onto it. Okay, that seems like that's coming. The whole thing just pops out like, oh. That is properly used, isn't it? Properly used and dirty. So, just pop that old filter out. Pop it in there, because we won't be needing it anymore. And then, what we're going to do is extract the oil using my nice new toy down there. Let's pop this one out of the way. We'll keep this nice and safe, because we're going to be reusing that and obviously then attaching it to the new oil filter, which is in here with the O-ring as well. So because this is a dipstick equipped car, i.e. you can check the oil level manually with this dipstick, this is where we're going to be extracting the oil from. So if I take the dipstick out, and again, just rest it to the side nice and safe, and pop it on here, then we're going to be popping our extraction tube in there and hopefully pumping around nine and a half liters. I mean, this is nine liters. We'll see exactly how much comes out, but yeah, around nine liters of oil out of there. So I've just added a second smaller tube because I don't think it was quite long enough to get to the bottom of there. And if we start pumping now, hopefully in a second we'll see some oil coming up. Well, I'm not going to be giving Sam's motor machine a run for his money anytime soon. That's the mess that I've created doing the oil <laughs> extraction. And uh, yeah, over here then we've got a sort of full uh, oil thing, although like I say, not done very tidily. Uh, anyway, that means it's now time to, well, we'll put the dipstick back in, which is here, and get that back in the hole nicely. And then what we're going to do now is put together the new uh, oil filter, put the filter back in the housing. There's a rubber O-ring here which needs to, well, replace this one, which you can probably just about see, the old O-ring here. So that needs to come off. I guess I'll use a flathead screwdriver to do that. And then put the new O-ring over, pop this in, and then secure it back into where it's meant to go in there. Okay then, so small little flathead here to get off the old rubber seal. There we go. Pull that off. Then we need to stretch over the new one and get it into here. Make sure it's all in, that's in. And then a new filter goes in like this and should click, line it up in the hole and click it in there. And then we slide it back in. Now this point, I might need to get a ladder because I want to make sure that it's going in the right place. So it looks like this little hole there that's sticking out the bottom, you can see there's a little hole down the far side there. So I'm just going to line it up like that. Right. That isn't going anywhere. So now what we want to do is actually put some oil back in the car, which is where I show you this stuff. So this is what we've got. It is Granville FSF 5W30, which is the correct spec oil for this car. And as with Sam, which <laughs> as you can see, I'm referring to his video here, we'll put in five liters first because 
well, about nine litres has just come out of the car. So we know that there's at least that much capacity. We'll go with five, then we'll do a further three and a half. Then we'll check the oil level and go from there, topping up incrementally if we need to, based on what the dipstick's telling us. So I can go ahead now, get my new oil funnel out, pop it in the filler cap area here, pop in five litres and we'll go from there. And that is absolutely ridiculous. If you look at the colour of this oil that's now going in, compared to what we've just had out, which was black, uh, that oil was horrendous that was going around the engine. So this, hopefully, should just transform the way the car drives. And I'm not ashamed to admit it, I'm going through the owner's handbook systematically here just to double check every step, just when it comes to the basics, like oil checking, knowing the minimum and maximum levels on this dipstick. It's just double, double check, because I don't want to make any errors if I can help it. Okay. And it sounds lovely and smooth. I'll probably also take this time to have a look and check that there's no leaks. Firstly, from what I can see behind the car in a second, but also from underneath. So let's go and have a quick look now. Looks okay. Looks like I haven't done a completely terrible job, which makes me very, very happy indeed. And yeah, all sounds fine in here as well. I wonder if my fuel economy, my fuel consumption will increase after changing the diesel filter. I have no idea. We are a little bit low now, so let's pop in another 500 mils. Okay, and that's the oil now filled back up to where it should be. And so that marks that part of the service, quote unquote, complete. Okay, so it's air filter time. And um, again, one of the easier tasks today, precariously placed coffee there. Um, in this box, Marley air filter, again, came with that kit. And all you're gonna need here is a Phillips head screwdriver. There's six screws to undo, to open up this housing, take the old filter out, which would be interesting to see how dirty that is actually, and then pop the new one in. And then I think after that, we'll do the diesel filter or fuel filter and then we've just got, I think after that, it's just literally the cabin filter to do, which uh, is again, very quick and easy. Then I'll do some things like topping up the coolant and that'll be it. Oh, and screen wash. I've got some more screen wash because I got a warning as well about the screen wash. And then hopefully we're good to go. Now I should just point out at, at this moment, actually, um, I mentioned in that first video that we've got a little bit of a transmission program error fault that's coming up every now and then. Now I've driven the car well, as uh, I'm filming this, I've had it about two weeks now, and I would say that that error code comes up maybe one in five times that I start the car, and always then clears um, after I switch the car off and on again. Now, uh, again, big thanks to Sam's Motor and Machine, because he also did a video on a transmission mega flush. And so I've decided to use the same chap, a guy called Ian Bodsey, and he's booked in to do a mega flush, amongst some other things, actually, um, the diff, and the transfer box oil uh, in May sometime. So what I'm gonna do basically is obviously this oil service here in mid April, and then um, not drive this car ever so much until we have the transmission flush done in May. So that's my plan really. So I've got basically four or five week wait until I can really use this car. And uh, trust me, there's a really big trip planned for this car as soon as I can do it, but I'm just being extra safe. Um, I want to look after this one and uh, don't want to put too many miles on it, of course, if I don't have to, whilst we wait for the transmission to be flushed and serviced. 
Uh, which brings me on to what am I going to be using? Well, actually, it looks like my girlfriend and I have made the decision to keep the old Range Rover. So I think we're going to be keeping that as a sort of runabout car. Sometimes it's better the devil that you know, isn't it? And in terms of what I could get for that car, we're talking between two and three grand max. So at that point, is it really worth selling? You know, is there any other runabout you can buy for two or three grand that's going to be sort of as tactile and usable as that Range Rover? Well, yes, but... We love that car, so why not keep it and use that as a runabout? So I'll probably be driving around that. If you see me around driving that, that's because I'm sort of sitting on this one while we wait for the transmission to be sorted. Anyway, there's a very elongated explanation into changing an air filter, but that's exactly what we're going to do now. So I'm going to shut up, drink some coffee, undo these uh, nuts or these screws, whatever you call them, pop in the new filter, and then we'll move on to the diesel fuel filter because that's going to be a little bit more of a challenge for me, I think. But We'll see, it's all a learning curve and I'm so happy that I can bring you guys along for the uh, excitement. There we go. So, that is the old air filter. And it's pretty disgusting, actually, as you would expect. Definitely had some use, full of crap. And so let's throw that one in the box full of uh, oldies. Open up the nice new packaging. So satisfying, actually, opening up car parts and being able to do it yourself. Oh, look at that. Gorgeous. Let's get rid of the box. And nice and simply, just slot that right back in. Fits perfectly. It's very impressive, actually, how you can sort of order this service pack and just have the peace of mind that what you're ordering is to the specification of your car, which all of this stuff is. Right, now what I'm thinking is, do I secure this box back on now? Or do I take it off entirely to get to this? Which I'm not sure. There we go. So that's that. Maths are still plugged in. Will that give me enough room? Probably not. So I'm going to take the lower housing out. This poor air filter is getting more use than it should do already. Let's just pop that there. And then, let's try and wiggle this out. There we go. There we go. Okay, well now this means that I should be able to just pop out the fuel filter. Yep. Perfect, nice and easy. And, ah, this has got a plug connecting it at the bottom. So it seems a bit more sensible uh, to me to put on the original fixture onto the new filter because then I know it's going to secure to the car properly. It could be clever or it could be really stupid. Um, just looking at the instructions here. Yeah, secure that, push it on. Okay, so that fixture's back on. Cap's going to go over this and bring it right up to the top. Make sure it's straight. Okay, and then we're going to try and pop on the new thing here, which seems to be seems to be going on. Okay, then there's just that connector at the bottom here that needs to be securely pushed back on. Let's see if we can work this out. So we've got that, we've got this. There we go. That's fully in. Okay, I think that's secure. Famous last words, please God, I hope I've done that right. I cannot shimmy it at all, so I think it's completely locked into place, which is good. Then it's time to 
pop in the lower air filter housing again. And uh, that's full of crap actually, so we might as well empty that out whilst we're here. Happy days. Right, and then we've got to basically secure it back in to place. Make sure everything's where it should be. This torch would really come in handy right now, but the battery is dead on it, which is annoying. <laughs> Typical, isn't it? It's when you really need things that they fail on you. Right, so after much toil in here, I think there's the new fuel filter. And we finally got the lower housing uh, for the air box and everything back on here, new filter in. And so what we're going to do is hopefully pressurize this new fuel filter by switching the ignition on for 60 seconds. And if it's going to work, we're gonna know because we're gonna be able to hear the diesel moving its way around. So that's ignition on and And so I'm just going to hijack the video there because things did go a little bit differently to how you've seen in the video. So firstly and foremostly, uh, when I was trying to fit the diesel filter, as you may have seen at the start of the video and I'll show you now, I actually left the air box on and tried to take the diesel filter out with that on. And that resulted in me sort of dropping the diesel filter and then not being able to wriggle it around the air box and the pipes and various little things to get it out. So strongly recommend that you do do what I ultimately did and remove the air box, the air filter housing, upper and lower, uh, because it gets access to that diesel filter. It makes it very, very easy to do. And secondly, the biggest issue that we encountered was the diesel filter itself. Now, um, I showed you in the video there, me just securing it. However, when I went then to test um, the car and tried to pressurize the system, I couldn't hear anything, which is a little bit odd. And then when I started the engine, there was a slight fuel leak coming from the bottom of the filter. Now, I spent hours and hours refitting it, trying different, you know, things, putting the old one back in and couldn't for the life of me work out what the problem was. But ultimately, it ended up being the fact that I'd left the rubber gasket off the new one out. It comes in the package sort of in the, the lower part and it's very hidden. And because I'd changed the lower part, the connector at the bottom, for the old one, uh, I'd missed out the rubber gasket. So that was exactly why it was causing the problem. And lastly, we changed the pollen or cabin filter, which is extremely easy to do, just under the bonnet, sort of in between the windscreen wipers. There's a little hatch, which you pull open, and you quite simply pull out the old pollen filter, chuck in the new one, and close it back up again. And that is literally it. So although it took a lot longer than anticipated, I did manage to get it all done in the end. I've driven the car. It's been a couple of days since I did that filming and the car is fab. It seems great. For some reason, the fuel economy seems a little bit worse than before. So I don't know if I've done something wrong there. I've checked everything and I can't work it out. Maybe it's just my head playing games on me because I thought it would be better. But anyway, last thing I wanted to tell you is you can, of course, reset the service interval on your dash on your instrument cluster at home by yourself you don't need a specialist to do it and you don't need any tools there's literally a way that range rover designed it so that you can do it right now while i'm sitting here so all you have to do is put your key in the ignition turn it to the on setting turn the key back out take it out put it back in and then you're going to turn it to the on setting again but as you do it you're going to hold the left hand sort of pushy outy button on the instrument cluster just to the bottom left of the speedo between the speedo and the fuel gauge and then it's going to come up flashing with service you keep holding it until the service uh, word stops flashing and becomes solid at which point you press it again and it will come up with reset interval at which point you just let it do that and that's it it resets the service interval and now i've got fifteen thousand miles left before my next oil service Anyway, that video uh, was a big learning curve for me. I've learned a lot and I'll always make sure to check for gaskets now going forward. But that service kit cost around 150 quid. Now I did buy some tools like the pumps and I bought some extra spanners and things in particular for this job. Um, but going forward, it's, it's basically paid for itself on the first one. 
So any other times that I service cars now, um, it's going to be massively cheaper to do it that way. So really happy I did it myself. And do stay tuned because there's some more things I'm going to be doing to this Range Rover uh, in the next videos that you see on this channel. So again, apologies for the sort of rough and readiness of this one. This is sort of how they go a lot with these sort of mechanical style videos. But I hope you found it enjoyable to watch. And for those of you that are thinking about doing this yourself and are not particularly mechanically minded, um, I really encourage you to do so. There's some great videos and tools and tutorials out there on the internet. There's obviously this one you've just watched, but I wouldn't really call it a tutorial. But people like Sam's Motor and Machine, um, amongst other channels, are really, really good at educating you um, how to do it. And hey, if I can do it, then anyone can do it. And I really mean that. So thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all very, very soon.